when I think about um, Marcelo Picirillo, my dad, um, first and foremost, the father figure that he's always been to me. Um, but importantly, I think something that I take away um, that my dad tries to uh, put to practice every day is really um, when you go for something, go wholeheartedly. Uh, and I think we grew up with that a lot. Uh, I think a lot of the times, no, I don't think I've experienced that my dad also um, challenged us. So when you're younger, you think of it as somebody being really hard on you or why is he making things more difficult? Why can't he just, you know, go with it? Um, but later on in life, you're really appreciative about that because he showed us just how badly you have to show that you want something. Um, growing up, if he wanted to do a sport or when I wanted to do ballet, it wasn't just, hey dad, I wanna do ballet, and then it was that. It was, well, why? And how are you going to do it? And do you know who you need to call? And as a kid growing up and getting all those questions, you're like, oh my goodness, I just wanted to do one thing. But what he really pushed us to do is to really ask ourselves, are we uh, willing and able to commit to this? And um, he does that every day and he challenges himself every day to be the best version of himself. And uh, to this day, I'm really appreciative of that because uh, you go out into this world realizing that every day there's a new challenge and you need to commit yourself um, and be confident in yourself and prove to oneself how badly you actually want something. Okay, so what makes my dad, Marcelo, Cello, inspirational? Um, he's inspired me my whole life. Um, not necessarily to be just like him, but to, to figure out who I am and to follow who that person is. And I'm very lucky that I had that in my life since a very young age because I wouldn't be anywhere near as successful as I am without that. I think the biggest thing that I learned from him in terms of life in general is the understanding that life is hills and valleys and it's not just one peak you're not just going to peak at one point in your life and then the rest is going to be a disaster it's the understanding that there are going to be happier moments and there's going to be less happy moments but to find joy in all of those moments um a lot of the times when I was growing up, he would take a cup and fill it up halfway and just place it on the table for me so that I could get a visual. And he would ask me, how are you going to look at this cup today? Are you going to look at it half full or half empty? And obviously I always chose to look at my cup half full. Um, and I just think that is how I live my life today as a 23 year old woman in New York City. A lot of people tell me that I'm very positive and I don't think I would have been able to achieve what I have without that mindset since, since a little kid. I think I have a good concept of, oh well, that's okay, life moves on because my dad always let me know the difference between good and bad days and that bad days are temporary. Um, that's one thing that I find inspirational about him. And then another thing is just the genuinity of my emotions. My dad is someone who I admire because he's so truthful when it comes to emotions, whether they're good or bad emotions, but he always remains genuine. And I think, um, a lot of people stray away from being truthful to themselves, but he is someone who is very honest with himself which in turn means he's very honest with his family and which means that I believe in the goodness of being honest and living my life with integrity and doing the right thing when no one is watching. So I could go on, but that's, well, that's mainly it for now. So I love my dad. 
Hey y'all, my buddy Marcelo is a great guy. He's very passionate about everything he does and great to hang out with and love him like a brother. Cello is part of our A golf team. He's uh, very passionate about golf and uh, he makes us uh, as a team much, much better. Cello, my original partner. We started Golf Journey 15 plus years ago. Um, I tell you what, anything you do, you've always excelled in it. We started way high caps, and I'm proud of you, how low you've got in the golf world, and also keeping out that working out. Love you, bro. Hey, y'all, my buddy Marcelo is a great guy. Okay, so um, what makes Marce or BB2 um, an inspiration? Uh, or an inspirational person um, for all of us here at home. Um, he has so many, many treats. Uh, of course, he's the love of my, my life, right? Um, but I would like to, to highlight some of the key elements that he uses in his daily life to, um, to be an inspiration. Uh, and to live the life of someone who is trying to inspire our others as well. Um, he's one of those persons who will always put others first. He's always thinking about his family, his daughters, his wife, um, father, mother, sisters, um, sisters-in-law. So uh, definitely those are the, the, the key elements that make him so unique in terms of the inspirational component. Um, he might go to, to a store, he listen to music, he may watch a movie, he may read a book, may read um, something on social media, and he will always identify a way to use it in a positive way um, and use it towards the inspiration for others. Uh, every morning he will spend some time reviewing information or articles and he will share with all of us, uh, which is a way to, to, to start our days um, with a quote of inspiration. But not only that, he lives through inspiring others. How? By making sure that he will not ask you or request from anybody to do something if he's not doing it himself first, whether it's um, working out, uh, whether it's um, pursuing a goal in a sport, whether it's pursuing another goal um, on his job, uh, challenging himself, through new situations, new opportunities, or difficulties in life, right? Um, so that's the main or key point that Marcelo has and will always have to inspire others, uh, particularly myself, his wife, and his family. Thank you. Love you. Hey everybody! Hi, welcome to the episode two of the Jello Show, uh, where we try to understand the purpose in life, and we try to live inspiring others by the example. And today, I'm very proudly want to introduce our my our two special guests. Mm -hmm. So the idea today, as I as I told everybody, as I told you, Kiani, uh, last time. Uh, you know, I like to inspire by example, but not just telling you what to do, my own experience. So in this particular case, so, you know, uh, we'll try, I'll try to very objectively interview <laughs> my two daughters so they can tell everybody their experience of living with somebody who always wanted to inspire by example, so they could chase their dreams. So uh, without further ado, yeah, go I'm, ahead. 
Now, I'm going to be able to tell if they're sugarcoating a little too much because I'm not related to any of you, so I can see through it. So careful, ladies, careful. Maria exactly. Does. I never do. I never should have said anything. <laughs> yeah, you you'll see. You will be able to see the different personalities. So, before, uh, without further ado, you had a little bit of glimpse of each of them in the videos that we showed. So, first of all, I'm going to go with with Maria. So, uh, Maria, tell us and the audience uh, where you were born. Uh, where where you went to school, what did you study, and where you living now? Yeah, so that's always interesting because it involves a lot of different places. So, of course, growing up, um, you and mom are originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina, but I was actually born, born in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So, mainly raised in early childhood in Florida, which is really nice. Um, always going back to Buenos Aires to visit family because, of course, it was just us four uh, in the U.S. Um, so there was always this, like, push and pull, you know, growing up in Florida, um, but having uh, pieces of your, um, of your heart in another, in another land. Um, and then through, through my parents' opportunities and their careers, um, as they progressed, they also shared that with us. And uh, as a family, they made the decision to, to move us to North Carolina, which is where uh, I also studied. So I went to the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Um, and in the beginning, just kind of was feeling the waters and I felt, okay, I'm a sociable person. I, I think this is a nice route. So I went into the business school and I studied marketing strategy not really when you're that young, not really knowing what it means and also going to school, it's, it's different from getting hands-on experience. Um, while I was there, I also studied abroad in Valencia um, and I met a boy and he was Dutch <laughs> and he, he got me curious about what it would be like to continue my studies abroad. Um, so I finished my bachelor's and then I decided I'm actually only getting started with, uh, with what I really like. And, and I felt I was just kind of on the cusp of what I was learning and I wanted to dive into it a little bit better. It was around 2017. So, you know, digitalization was like rapidly amping up at that point. Um, marketing as we knew it was also changing. Um, thanks to social media. So I felt I needed to still kind of dive into that a little bit more, which um, brought me all the way to Amsterdam and the Netherlands where I did my master's. And that was a really fun adventure. And I've been there for the last six years, um, did my master's, started working, gained, um, gained some experience in my career. And just recently, as of two weeks ago, I moved with my husband and my dog to New York and super happy because I'm only a metro or a subway ride away uh, from my sister now. So, yeah, that's a little bit about Awesome. Me. Awesome. Which just leads us to Miki. So, Miki, tell us your story now. Um, I was also raised in North Carolina. I Maria kind of explained the whole story, um, but I was 18 years old when I got into a Greyhound bus with two 100 pound luggages that my mom and my sister helped me pack. And I moved all the way to New York and I've been living here the past six years. I've lived pretty much in every popular borough of New York. Um, I studied college the past five years at Pace University downtown. I studied communication studies. I graduated in May, which is actually something I cannot believe I've accomplished. I never thought I would get through college. I'm not one of those people. Um, and now I manage a store in the East Village and I play music professionally um, with working on several different projects at the moment, but that's what I do my life. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So the two sisters are together now in New York. It's not so close to the Carolinas, but hey, I'll take it. 
they're in the same continent, right? Yeah. So, but but basically, uh, both, uh, which going a little bit into the topic, you know, the main topic. So both in their own way, were chasing their dreams, whether it was to, uh, I always tell Maria that she is kind of conquering the world one smile at a time. So she chased her dream to go to Europe and be by herself with a boyfriend and then make it there. Uh -huh. And then Miki, since she was like three or four years old, she always liked to wear a t-shirt that said, I love New York. So when she started to talk, she said, I would love to live in New York. So <laughs> she's chasing that dream, which take us to the, the main topic, which is uh, how somebody could uh, inspire, you know, their children in chasing their dreams. And the way my philosophy, as you know it, is inspired by example, not telling you what to do, but if you see me doing it, then you can take pieces here and there to use for your advantage to do that. So the perspective today is from a daughter. So I'm gonna go first to you, Maria, not in particular order, but so what has been your experience, a little bit what you explained in the video, but was what was your experience so other daughters like you, other other sons, you know, could take to for their own experience. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of angles to approach it. I mean, I can approach it from like how I motivated myself or what within me inspired me. But I think being that the video was also about how you kind of pushed us and the mindset that you instilled in us, I can, I can approach it from that. I think I mentioned in the video how you you liked to challenge us. So I think that was a a, a lesson that um kind of like learned early on. And sometimes we view like challenging you know uh, your children or challenging your spouse as uh, being difficult or. Sometimes it's seen as something negative, but we grew up with the, the, the opposite of that, which is to challenge somebody means you have an opportunity to show what that means to you. Um, so growing up, my sister and I, we were super just, we wanted to do everything. Anything that we saw, we were like, oh, that would be really cool to try. And, um, my parents were super open. They wanted to try to give us every experience possible. And I think any experience that we wanted, like they, they were open for it. The only thing was that we also had to put in the work. So I remember like when we wanted to start dancing, that was one of the first things that like really started to come more from us and less like our parents trying to like have us, you know, explore things and, and they and they kind of like bring it to the table. This was like one of the first things, at least in my memory, that I was like, this is something I really want to pursue. Well, um, I just did it because you did it. But then I <laughs> fell in love with it too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'll never forget that um, it wasn't just a, hey, I want this. And it was like, okay. No, it was like, okay what studio, um, how much does it cost? How many times do you have to go there? Like, what do you need? What are the names? And that's what I mean by challenge. It wasn't just a simple, I want this, hey, okay. We had to actually, um, they kind of pushed us to put ourselves forward and to, to seek out um, and embrace, you know, as a child, it can be kind of uncomfortable going up to a store and like asking for a pamphlet for example because you're used to your your parents speaking on your behalf or if you want something they they tend to go forward and take that first step for you so that was like one of the few things in the beginning where it was like us taking the first step rather than kind of doing it behind you know the leg of a parent um and although it was like in my mind a lot more nerve-wracking the, the actual physical, uh, you know, activity of doing it 
was really, um, yeah, like a, a pivotal moment where it's like, okay, things that are scary tend to be things that are really good because it means you're like moving somewhere or you're putting yourself in a uncomfortable situation, which could have really big, um, yeah, returns or gains in the end. So, 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 yeah. so essentially you were having to take, even at an early age, take responsibility or what you wanted to do. And what would you think that, so it was tough in the beginning, but how did that help you now that you're an adult and you're making decisions and you're, you know, going to a country that you didn't even know the language. So did that help you to open doors for doing that? Yeah, definitely. I think that mentality just stuck with me. And I think also with Mickey, this idea of like, you're going to be challenged today. It's like your dad challenging you, asking you how badly do you want this? But, you know, it, it proved as my life continued that you're going to get challenged by people, by institutions. Um, and it's just a chance for you to like also ask yourself, how badly do you actually want this? Why do you want it? Um, so I think that that's what I, I carried with me. I, I remember when like I first said I wanted to do my master's in the Netherlands, like you guys were very supportive, but it wasn't that you just handed it to me on a platter. Like you really asked me, you know, is this the right decision? Do you have the same opportunities that you would if you did, you know, a master's here in, in the US? Just asking critical questions that a lot of times you know like people that truly you know care for you are going to be there and ask those difficult questions and it's up to you whether how you react to that and you can embrace it and you can just let it help you um on your path awesome and and mickey how can you relate to that in whatever you wanted to do your your chasing your dreams or things like that uh do you do you relate think, to that how I think, yeah i think the biggest thing for me definitely like especially being the youngest um understanding that there's a solution to every problem like everything is fixable i think has helped me a lot in a city like new york because I have gone through six years of just being used to there's going to be either a small challenge or a really big challenge that I'm going to face every single day. But it's just like the positivity to just like, okay, move forward. Um, but for me, I would say the biggest thing for me is um, it's always been the word integrity. Integrity has been something that just I remember the first time I learned the meaning of that word. It's stuck with me. It's doing the right thing when no one is looking. Uh, I choose a path that I know is not going to be nearly as successful as perhaps my sister, but I chose to do what I wanted to do at the end of the day. Um, and every time I feel disappointed with my progress. I still know that every time I sit down with my instrument, it's it's still progress. I still sat with it. I still did something. Um, and I actually had a conversation yesterday with another close musician friend of mine, how when writing music, when being a creator, we set certain timelines and certain pressures for ourselves because we know what we're capable of. But if we lose, the love for art. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> then, it makes it, <laughs> then it makes it, you know, it makes it disingenuous in my opinion, um, because it's like you're not watering this relationship that you have with your instrument. And that's just how I feel. I mean, it's just, and also there's, you know, doing the right thing when no one's looking. It's like <laughs> not stabbing someone in the back or just, proper etiquette, helping out other people. But for me, it's just like knowing that I'm doing what I want to do. It might not, I kind of think it's like me being a musician and like punk music, it's kind of like a dad's worst nightmare a little bit because it's like, oh, my daughter is hanging out with punks. Um, 
but my dad has been really supportive of it, which has also been surprising um, because my parents have just like been like, okay, this is something that you want to do, you, you do it. Um, and it surprised me as their kid that they were so okay with all of these endeavors that I've decided to randomly go along. As an outsider looking in, what I'm noticing, not knowing either of you, is I always love a parent who can nurture and cultivate their kids to their own personality. There's a lot of times where a parent will treat every kid the exact same way or do the exact same thing as if they don't have a different personality. How important was it that he treated you both as individuals and not as cookie cutter sisters who have to do the same exact thing? Well, it was really funny growing up. <laughs> because the way my dad and I talked was really different from the way that I saw him and my sister talk. My sister is able to have uh, much more peaceful conversations, let's say, <laughs> harmonious. And my dad and I are both rebel nature, very outspoken people. So when we're talking, it's like two bulls fighting, you know? Yeah, but I think if you ask dad, I think it's good it's good that you mentioned that because i think our personalities are really like on different ends of the spectrum yet there's so much that complements each other and i think the important thing is that our values and our morals were really established when we were young and i think that's where we really align as sisters and that's where the bond is like really unbreakable we we really see like eye to eye on those really important things um but having said that, I definitely did give my dad some rituals that I had back. Um, I think we were in our own ways. Um, the same way he challenged us, we challenged him as a man, I'm sure. Um, oh, I think your headset might be dying. Yeah. <laughs> your earbuds. You, 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 know, you know, it's it's very, very interesting the question that you asked because in, in from my side, so I I knew that always knew their different personalities and the different ways to approach and let them be themselves. But at the same time, as a parent, I always try to be equal to both. Uh, give you a, a a a simple example. So if if I see that Mickey's account is a little low, so I would punch in a little bit I don't but at like the same time I don't at like the same time I would do the same for Maria and she wouldn't even uh, know that but wait, I know wait. that the way that both get there is different but one key secret that I had mm -hmm. in order to uh, establish the relationship that I have with them is that I was lucky enough that especially Miki was never interested in in driving herself to school so i had many I many many good times that i would drive them to school and we would have a conversation which was a lot of time kind of unidirectional but i'm surprised up to this day how both they remember what i said that particular day that then they said they claimed that they used it so uh, you you wanted to ask or say something Keone? well i was it? i was laughing when she said she doesn't like when you do that and i'm like uh, the kids like me are like uh, i'm 44 and i'm still waiting for my dad to put money in my account <laughs> yeah <laughs> no yeah they they my dad has raised us to be very independent but we are always going to be daddy's yeah. girls i think me being the youngest my dad tends to hold on to me a little a little more mm -hmm. uh, so that's why i'm like i'm an adult dad i don't need any help <laughs> even though i desperately do <laughs> i count it as a bonus just look yeah. at it like that. it's like i'm independent because i'm a middle child and mm -hmm. middle child's children seem to be the most independent because it's like, hey, here's the older one. They get everything. Oh, and there's the baby. And we, yeah, we have this other one that's in the middle. So uh, I tend to be independent. So I totally get uh, what you're saying. And um, I like the 
I, I, I'm so hooked on the fact that I just love the way that you guys were both allowed to be um, individuals. What was it like for you? Because Maria, you left home first, correct? Oh, is she frozen? Oh, there we go. Oh, the audio is not. Okay, we'll try to get the audio back on for Maria. So, Michaela, I want to ask you, um, what? because she told us about packing the bags, getting it on the bus, and having to leave. What was that whole ordeal like? What 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 was your mind at, and how did that feel? Oh, uh, well, for being honest, I was like, I'm finally leaving North Carolina. Like, I was very excited to be leaving North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, my mom and my dad... I remember my dad really just being honest with me because at first he was like, no, she's not going to New York. I'm not letting my youngest daughter move to the scariest city in the world. Um, but then like slowly he just started giving me some hard truths. It was like, you're going to reach a point in your life where you're just going to have, like, you're just going to realize that life is hard and you're too young to realize that now. And I moved at 18 and the person I was at 18 is completely different from the person I am now. But I was so naive and I did not know that I would eventually become the person that I am today. Um, but I think my parents being there, but at the same time letting me go off to explore myself was the best thing that could have happened to me as a human being. Um, just because I always felt very attached to all of my family members being the youngest they all like really wanted to take care of me and it be, it be it felt hard to just like realize oh i'm my own person and i'm going on this adventure by myself and i don't know where it's going to take me and this is where i've ended up <laughs> mm. wow uh maria uh maria do you, can you hear us still can you hear can we hear you yes yeah, can we can hear you. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. So same question that I just asked Michaela. When you first had to leave, leave, not go to college in the same state, because we know that's when I left, I went from Miami to Texas. So I couldn't, you know, drive to mom and dad if I had an issue. How was it when you first left, left, like move, putting distance? But have you ever been far apart? Um. Well... I think my parents like raised us to be very independent, but being independent, I think is really different from um, really, you know, living in that, that space and time of true distance. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in the beginning, to be honest, it was a, you're in like a honeymoon phase, right? So um, everything is new, everything is exciting, everything is cute, because, you know, it's just so different. Um, so, you know, if I'm being really honest, like the first month, month and a half, it's, it's, it's new, it's exciting, you're adapting. Of course, some things are a little bit nerve wracking, but we we grew up traveling a lot. So I think we've always just kept an open mind and stayed curious like okay maybe something is not like what we're used to at home but try it at least um but then after that that initial honeymoon phase settles in and then you're still not going home there are moments where you know there are like frustrations and it can really get to you um especially because I was having like a six hour time difference. Mm -hmm. So simple things like catching up suddenly weren't so simple. And I think those things in the beginning, you're, you're can brush them off, but over time it, it does get to you. And, you know, on those really low days, say like nothing is going your way. And then on top of that, um, not being able to, to communicate with the people that know you really well, that can, that, that's really a challenge. Um, but I think we are really tight knit, like between the four of us. Um, and I think we know each other's kind of, we've learned each other's languages of, uh, of care. And like my sister and my mom would just know, Hmm, let me check up on her. 
let me see if she's okay. Um, my dad also had his like ways of, you know, he, with my mom, it's more like a very, like day to day contact, but with him, it's really like in those like dire moments, he was always there. He would be like in the middle of a, I don't know, a conference or a meeting, you know, really important things. And he's read and already responding and already ready to call you. Um, uh -oh. So yeah, oh, that that's been my experience. Yeah. The amount of times he's just like dropped everything to just mm -hmm. solve our problems for us. But I think it was always um, enough of this is something I can help you with, and then this is something that you you're on your own for this one. Uh, I yeah. think I think the thing that helped him listening to both of you is it's it's easier to do that when your kids are independent and you know that if they're calling you you're almost the last resort or they've exhausted all of their means of doing it. Cause you know, you have those parents where there's their kids, as soon as something happened, they're calling them. And so I think you both being so independent, it allowed him to have that uh, will of, if he was notified that you're having an issue, this is important or they wouldn't have brought it up. Mm -hmm. Does that, does that sound about right? Cause that's what I'm feeling. Even not knowing you guys, you know, situation. Um, yeah, like, I think Mickey and I really try to, we've always just, we were really hard headed. So we really want to, <laughs> for one reason or another, it's like, if we have to like, I could do it. Go to our dad, <laughs> then it's like, oh, oh I literally have to verbally say to myself and I say it out loud. I say, I can do anything I set my mind to no matter oh, what yeah. it is. I remember I like lost a ring or something underneath like a bed mm -hmm. and like, I had to like, the bed was tucked into the wall and I had to find a hanger. And I was like, you know what? I can do anything I set my mind to. I got the ring. Uh, but yeah, definitely dad is the last. Are you ready for a spicy question? Sure. Ooh, I love what spicy. was it like when you had to introduce the first boyfriend? <laughs> well, I'm still single and I've always had bad taste. You can ask the rest of my family members, but my, my older sister has had much better luck in that department than I have. So you never <laughs> had to, even though you didn't date uh, or, you know, were in a relationship, there was never anyone of interest that you had, that you introduced your father like that never um, happened? There were definitely, and... Uh, <sighs> It, my dad was very kind to all of them. I think in the back of his mind, I think he was really great when it came to having the boyfriends because I think in the back of his mind, he knew, okay, this guy is definitely not enough for my daughter, but this is going to make her the person she will one day be. So I'm just going to, I'm going to scare the boy, but I'm not <laughs> going to say anything to my daughter because... Mm -hmm. Him and I are so similar that like we would just yeah. Like, <laughs> it's funny like you see all those rom coms like Meet the Fuckers and the dad is like super uh -huh. intimidating. Like, yeah, <laughs> dad is actually really composed, and I think actually Very. that was the most intimidating thing because he was like always a man of few words. Mm -hmm. So every guy is like does he does he like me i have no idea well, because and the guy knows that we love our dad so that makes yeah. him scarier for them I this think. is why we're glad you're on because people who didn't grow up with with cello and don't know him like i know him as being his coach and so you learn different things about people so when you said my dad is a dad a few words i'm like i almost fell out of the chair because when he talks to me, I'm like, cello, all right, I got it. Too much, too much. You're too yeah, much. It's, it's one of the few times you'll actually catch him with not too much. It's, it's wow, like. Wow, that's cool. It needs to like mm -hmm. build with him. And mm -hmm. even like I would be like, what is going on through his mind? Because like mm -hmm. I think he was he's always been like that with friends, with boyfriends, my mom as well. It's just we've they've always embraced, you know, having a house with like open arms and us really, um, they really wanted people to come over. They wanted to get to know who who's in our lives, not like from a, I wanna like 
secretly sneak around and like they just genuinely yeah. were really happy to have people in the house i think that that's really a hispanic or latino thing that we have um they just genuinely were like yeah bring your friends here like you know um yeah my best friend yeah. on so many family vacations with us like we would plan <laughs> family vacations and i would be like can cali come and they're like sure yeah it's such a different feel from us we grew up like don't let nobody in my house that's what we get <laughs> no uh, one's allowed right over <laughs> uh, no. um this is awesome so yeah. oh go ahead tell me the thing. oh you missed it cello they talked about you scaring boyfriends away and all of that good stuff so you missed all the good stuff we gave all the dirty yeah. details yeah. So. You the, you're gonna have no. to I, I heard I heard a little bit of it, but uh, no, definitely, definitely was was good was good. Um, maybe maybe they can handle the mystery, ladies. Tell me how someone with such an amazing life and great career can have such terrible internet. <laughs> you, you, you know, it's it, it's been working uh, so good all this time and then when i had my daughters on you know i had oh they're the root of the problem like we get to it yeah yeah we yeah, actually yeah. intervened so that we have a little bit more airtime to talk <laughs> actually yeah it was it was all a setup i know i know i know Tell so me, but, but oh go but, yeah go ahead go ahead Kim. go ahead no because you've missed a lot of time so i don't want to take up if you got uh i was gonna this is what i was gonna ask can you tell me something that uh, if I don't know, I'm sorry, Maria, if you have children or not. I have a dog. That's my baby. I have okay. a cat. That's also my baby. I have a, oh, my God. So she's a cat mom. I'm a cat dad. I co-parent a cat. And it's only six months. So it's past the baby stage. And now it's in like that stage of where she just wants to tear everything up and get on my nerves. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to throw her out of the window like 90 times, but I love her, so I can't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if you have children, tell me the, the one thing that you can take from um, the teachings of your father growing up that you would definitely implement in your kid. And you can't say integrity because you've used that one a thousand times already. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, like a, a really big one for me is just um, like how they've embraced us like you said we're really different um we've had some like crazy ideas growing up and I we still we still do we literally come to them with like i want to be yeah like mickey wants to be a rock star i wanted to be a, a professional ballerina and like you know like i'm now i'm like yeah okay i'm i'm in corp but i know at one point i'm gonna keep going with my artwork and never once when we've come with these you know out of like out of the box ideas like never once did they ever shun it and say oh but that's not the safe route or oh do you think that you could do that like they've always just stayed incredibly curious and with this level of enthusiasm that like my mom and my dad both of them are just like yes I can see you doing that. And then just ask more questions. So like you dive deeper into, mm. you know, like painting this picture of this aspiration or dream that you have. And I, I've really taken that with me and, you know, growing, like I was an au pair for eight months when I first moved to the Netherlands. So that was really interesting being in someone's house, being a stranger in someone's house and taking care of their kids. Um, and so that really exposed me to, you know, being around a lot of kids because it's not just the ones you take care of, but it's all the kids that also come into the house, being at the school, seeing the way that parents interact with their kids. And it just, I never grew up with somebody ever, you know, shunning your ideas. So the few times that I ever heard that come out of an adult's mouth, I was really a bit like, taken back from it because i'm thinking like this kid is so young whether or not they actually mean they want to be a clown who cares like it's about building their confidence and you know there's like a lot of successful clowns out there so like who cares you know what i mean like, yeah. you know, like, but it's like, allow yeah like 
I think that's something I, I would really, I really want to take with me. Awesome. Okay. How about you, Mickey? Um, oh, my poor children, they're going to have a crazy mother. <laughs> um, I think for me, I think the biggest thing is to just, you know, it's kind of a cliche, but be yourself. I think my family has definitely always supported my desire to grow into the person I know I am or just like anything, like be outspoken, use your voice. I know that if I have a kid, they're going to have, you know, not a single mean bone in their body and to just always be themselves, be kind to everyone, be affectionate, give kisses, give hugs, like just be known for your kindness because I'm very grateful that at this point in my life, the majority of my friends would consider me one of the kindest people they know. And that's because I was raised with the parents that were like, even if you're mad, be nice. And that was hard for me as a kid. Oh, wow. I, I, I think a lot has to do uh, with the culture of the previous generation. So, uh, you know, uh, when we were raised, there was always like two or three or four professions that most of the kids were taught to get into. And then when we decided, both my wife and I, we decided to move to this country, the country of opportunities, so we could get out of that. And, and it's interesting that both my wife and I were both physicians, but they never wanted to be that. And we were open to that, to the possibility of there are other things, other interests, other dreams that they could be into. And not only one. You know, because that's culturally the other thing. If you wanted to be a doctor for the, your whole life, you would be a doctor. But then when you have opportunities and you have an open mind, so then you can be a doctor. And then at my age, I could be an actor, a model or an inspirator. And so a little bit of my, my message of inspiring by example and not by just telling what I tell you, know what I do, it, it has to do with that. You know, uh, because I'm a physician, I'm, I don't want you to be a physician. It could be a safe thing to do. You know, you can follow my steps and be in that bubble and I, you could be my legacy, but no, why doing that? So if, if I do it, inspire you to chase your dreams and do whatever you want in life, as long as you're, you put your mind, your, your heart into it, the sky's the limit. You know, so that's basically, I think, the result of, 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 you know, what I see in them. And talking about dreams, I wanted to kind of get to the last part of the episode by asking both of you, if you can share with us, what are your current and your future dreams? What you would like to enrich your life with? So, so we know if whoever wants to go first, you know, and, and then also what is it that you're doing on a daily basis to kind of fulfill the process of chasing that dream? You want to go first? Or you want to... uh, Mickey goes, you go first this time. Um, I would say I would love to eventually become some sort of business owner um in the future far future but for now i want to continue my musical journey continue um, i have so many ideas and so many projects that i want um, to fulfill and i know that i'm going to do them all um i think the biggest challenge as a musician is to just find the time to play your instrument and become one with your instrument and build the relationship with your instrument um sometimes life can get super busy but you need to make time for the things that are for you um so i'm trying to continue doing that um i would love to just continue i just got back from london and in the beginning of August, I would love to be able to continue to travel the world, 
on my own or with friends. Um, but my dream in life is to just have different little families all over the world because my friends are my family. So that's awesome. And, and can you tell us the name of your band? So if uh, people are watching, they can, they can follow you. Um, it's Grand Army Reapers. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. And, and you, Saucy Maria? Um, oh, yeah, there are a lot of like short term and long term aspirations as well. Um, I think there's like always there's there's really like two sides I, to me th that there's a very analytical side which is also why I'm in the profession that I'm in. Um, so, you know, out of my master's, I started working for a consultancy firm. And then from there, I went deeper into tech. But it's it's always been about connecting with people. Um, so, like, strip away the title or the company itself. The, the aim for every day is just helping people with their challenges and really getting to the, the bottlenecks and really helping them realize their visions, their North Stars. Um, and I actually really enjoy that and I want to continue to dive further into that. And um, so that's the really analytical side where I have these aspirations from like a professional career standpoint. I get to really challenge myself like as an individual um and you know, learn from executive leaders and even actually challenge them so that's really eye-opening for me so i still feel like i have a lot to gain from the point of me being the employee under an employer um and the opportunities that 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 sort of work can provide me when i'm when you're working for somebody um but then there's the other side of me that is very artistic and creative um we dance since we were young uh we've appreciated uh poetry because of our grandparents we've always been surrounded by um music and i think that has a lot to do with our culture um so i also would really love to i have like i'm starting up my own sort of media um where i dive into art and design and I do my own art so it would be really nice to one day be able to shift from being an employee for an, for an employer and one day be the employer um, of my own company and really use what I've learned from a business perspective and the opportunities that I have working under an organization and then take that, take those lessons and build sort of my own, yeah, empire. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. And, and you said your artistic side, but what is it that uh, I have, I happen to know a little bit, but what is it that you put in your mind into uh, for the short term or let's say in the next five years or so? You created like a, 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 a little company that you put together art and interior design and things like that? Yeah, so it's called MVB Studios and um, I, I'm still in the process of like working out the the full concept, but I I really like diving into art and I work with acrylics and abstracts and I would really love to be able to take that into design. So whether that be like staging um, homes, um, but also staging hotels and see what partnerships I can do with like decor companies as well. All right, so I have two questions. Uh, so I'll, I'll make the two questions in one. Uh, so if you had the chance to go back in time to your own self, you know, let's say uh, 10 years ago, both of you, uh, what would you tell your own self? Uh, uh, yeah, I want to do exactly the same things that I did. Uh, I would take this advice in a different way. Uh, so that's question number one. So go back in time 10 years ago. And question number two is, um, what would you advise uh, another daughter, 
you know, or another son, so another children who may or may not have the opportunity to have somebody that can inspire you by the example and open for you, open the doors for you to chase your dreams. What would you tell that other, you know, uh, younger, younger kid? For me, I would tell my younger self the things that you like are okay. Like keep liking them and keep diving into your interests and keep diving into your hobbies. I think throughout high school, especially, I was kind of um, and not like not an outcast because I wouldn't say an outcast, but I was just very into my own thing, and I felt kind of like ashamed of that. And then I feel like now as an adult, I'm fine. I'm, I'm tapping back into my interests and my individuality. And I feel like I'm being a lot more expressive of myself. And I still carry, I carry guilt that I didn't do that at that age. But at the same time, I'm like, well, if it's not now, it's never. Um, and I think that's what I would give the advice to younger kids. Because I know that ho hopefully there's a kid out there that was like me, maybe had weird, peculiar interests, keep liking them. You're going to find people, like, if you continue, like, I wish I could go back in time and reabsorb all the information that I was surrounding myself with so that I could just, ha I could just know more about the things that I like. Um, but, you know, just be, be proud of your uniqueness. It's not a negative thing. It's a great thing. Awesome. Awesome. That's that's great. You put the two questions, the two answers together. Mm -hmm. uh, so what about you, uh, Maria? There's like a lot of lessons that you wish you could tell your younger self. But I think if I think about how I was when I was younger, um, especially in high school at that age, like Mickey said, like what an awful time <laughs> it's I would just say and it's one thing to like say it but I would just try to really feel it that people are honestly way too absorbed with themselves to notice you and I mean that in the sense that if you want to do something that seems out there but you're like shy and afraid what are people gonna think of me honestly they're not gonna think anything and if they do it'll be for five seconds and then they go on with their day you know my generation we say we call that fan behavior they're behaving like a fan yeah but like i i think especially when you're young especially when you're that adolescence we suddenly care so much what other people think, but nobody wants to like be open and honest about that. So everyone is internalizing everything and caring so much. And it's like, it doesn't matter because it's just actually your mind overthinking everything. Honestly, if you tripped, that kid probably doesn't even remember. Maybe they didn't even see because they actually were like more absorbed with their own problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you 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 uh, both are. Yeah, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Keone. Go ahead. Oh no no no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I I was gonna say that the both uh, kind of uh, relate the answers to each other because when you're growing up and you're a teenager or go to high school, you're more. Uh, preoccupied of what others think of you and in a way you're forgetting what you yourself think of you and that's in a way what you're saying Maria that others are doing and then Miki what you're saying about you know uh, think about you being yourself what could be weird one day the next day could be cool uh, because it's a constant flow that is changing, but it's, it's, it's very, very, very cool to see. And to, it to doesn't hear. matter, like, once you actually get out into that world, like, you're going to find your people. Like, you realize that there's, there's, there's somebody for everyone. There's actually a few people out there for everyone, and we're more... Yeah, I love that part. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> oh, 
go chime in. I really I, need it. <laughs> I hope we have a part two of you lovely ladies on. It was such a, a great show. Uh, Cello, you've got some parting words for this episode today? So, uh, yeah. So basically is that uh, I think I did a decent uh, job with, with these two ladies. Yeah. Uh, they're very unique. They're, they're conquering the worlds their way. And the thing in, in general that I want to say to everybody is that in the process of being the best version of yourself, every day you're going to find ups and you're going to find downs. Uh, I always like to quote people and I heard this that I modify it a little bit, but uh, don't let those downs go to your heart and don't let those ups go to your head. So in other words, you know, again, don't look at whatever your dream or your objectives, your goals are in life. Don't look at them backwards. Don't go to the outcome of what you think the outcome is. It's just the process of daily. So again, when you ask me how you doing, I say mm -hmm. I'm better than yesterday and worse than tomorrow. So that's wow. the final message. Awesome. Thank you, lovely ladies. Uh, Thank you. I'm saying the process. That's already a show. Um, <laughs> and I hope we get to a part two with you two and I can ask you more spicy questions. We did the love fest today, but now we got to get to the spice. No, I'm just kidding. That's not this type of show. It was well, beautiful. I I, I let yeah. you do it, and my connection went went off exactly. I know, but I feel like if I want to get all the spice, I gotta just have Michaela on by herself. <laughs> <laughs> all it's right, true. lovely ladies, you raised two awesome women. Uh, if I ever have daughters, I hope they turn out half of what you two are, and they will be amazing. Have a great show, a great night, everybody. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.